Now that we have the ceiling painted and the doors and trim prepared, welcome to tutorial number three, painting the doors and trim, or the trim and doors. Here is a list of needed tools and material. I'm painting down the stairboards one step at a time using a small brush. Paint the top of the stairboards first, then holding the carpet back with one hand and the loaded paintbrush in the other, I apply the paint slightly agitating the brush. This pushes the paint out to the front edge of the bristles and helps push the paint back up to the carpet area. Be careful not to get paint on the carpet. Use a six inch drywall knife to separate the carpet from the stairboard. This will allow you to separate the carpet from the stairboard and paint below the carpet line. Start at the back of the tread and work out in small even strokes. Carefully move the knife forward. Use small strokes followed by a full stroke to even out the paint and brush lines before going to the next tread. Wipe off the knife between treads. Now that you've painted both sides of the stairs, paint around the hinges of the door. Using a small brush on this will work to your advantage. A small brush can get into those hard to paint areas that a larger brush cannot. Use your thumb or a rag to wipe up your mistakes. Once you're finished with the small brush, place it in the bucket of water. Now get the two and a half inch brush. If it was in the water, place it in the spinner and spin out the excess water. I like working around the room in one consistent flow of paint. Starting in the corner, using a 12 inch drywall knife to separate the carpet from the base, painting in 12 inch strokes, making sure that I get good coverage then following up with a longer stroke back over the area that I had just painted. The brush will pull paint away from an area. If your last strokes are to where you have been, you will get an even coverage. At a corner, work from the inside out in both directions. Use the drywall knife to separate the door jam from the carpet. If you have trouble around the casings, carefully pull the carpet fibers back or away with your hands. Gently agitate the bristles of the brush to gently push the paint down between the casing and the carpet. Paint up and around the door jam and casing in one constant flow. If you paint one side and then the other, you allow parts of one side to dry, causing the wet and dry paint not to blend properly. At the casing miter joints, start at the joint and brush away. This will diminish crossover strokes. Try to keep an even coat of paint. Don't worry if the color you're covering shows through a little bit. It will cover on the second coat. Remember that your last stroke before moving to a new area is to where you have been. This will maintain an even coat. If you are working with panel doors, paint the panel groove first, then the panel, followed by the next panel groove. Always be aware that there may be a few drips of paint at the bottom panel edges. Make sure you clean these up. Next, the style between them, followed by the rails above then the styles on each side of the door. 
carefully paint the edges of the door. Repeat this pattern with the bottom panels and the panels on the other side of the door. Now that you have everything painted, let it dry. Before you do the second coat, lightly sand all the woodwork and doors again. This allows you to see any pinholes or imperfections that you may want to fix. To fix these blemishes, you can use painter's putty. On this section of base, I found that it had been marked with some magic marker, and it had bled through the first coat of paint. To fix this, lightly sand, then paint with a stain blocker primer, either Kiehl's or Zinzer. It should take about an hour to dry, then sand again. Vacuum off the dust and you're ready for a second coat. I used the last of my trim paint on the first coat. It's time to open a new can and thin it a little. About a fourth cup of water will do. You want it thin enough to flow together and thick enough to stay on your work. I'm using the painter's pail this time because it's convenient and I don't like carrying around a full gallon of paint. Get the small brush out of the bucket and spin out the water. For the second coat, start the whole process over the stair boards, around the hinges, the base, the jam and casings, and the door. Now that we have the trim painted, we can paint the walls. Be sure to return and watch tutorial number four, Painting Walls. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Thank you for watching.